Good evening, I wanna call the Columbia County Board of Commissioners August 2nd, 2022 meeting to order. I ask Commissioner Galeas if he'll open us with an invocation. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Bow with me, please, dear friends. Our most high and most merciful Lord, we thank you for all of the gifts that you have bestowed upon us, the bounty which surround us. We ask that we may be worthy of all of the, the gifts and the grace and your mercies that you give us. Thank you for the protection of our uh, fire and emergency services people and come dwell with us as we uh, consider the matters before us to improve our community. Amen. Please stand for the pledge. <clears throat> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic, one nation, to God, visible, liberty and justice for all. Okay, let the record show we have a full quorum of commissioners. Commissioners, you have the minutes from our previous meeting of July 19th in your packet, so approve all, accept the motion to do so. I make a motion to accept as presented. Second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Mr. Johnson, I think we have one item to add to the agenda. Yes, Mr. Chairman, for your consideration, we asked to add item I2A. This will be a reconsider reconsideration of an item uh, that, that took place at the last meeting. Very good. And our special recognition and presentations, uh, there are two folks who've asked to speak of against a uh, zoning issue. I'm going to push that, and so before we get to that, you can speak. When we get to that issue, is, is there Mr. Floyd Everett here? Mr. Everett, you asked to speak about the Blind Veterans Association of Augusta. Welcome. Hey, boy. Sir, if you'll just state your name and address for the record, sir. My name is Floyd Everett. This is 51. President here for five years now. Welcome. Good to be back again before the board here to give you a few things about what the Blind Veterans Association is about. Uh, I, I'll try to be brief. Blind Veterans Association was an organization that was started in 1945, March 1945, and it was commissioned by the Congress in 10 years later. We, we, we are chartered for the sole purpose of advocating for blind veterans. Here at Blind Veterans, we got an organization charter that goes like the national. We got 1.5 blind veterans throughout the entire United States. We got 403 approximately in the state of Georgia. <coughs> Here in, the, in our local, <coughs> got somewhere in the neighborhood of 52. Uh, that's because, you know, that come and go a lot of the uh, Iraq veterans in Afghanistan is not as active as we would like. I contribute that to us. We got to do a better job in trying to recruit them, better job at getting the community to know what we do. One of the things that we do is called the White Cane Day. Then here's the cane. Uh, I didn't know it was so many different types until I got to be blind. I wasn't born blind. Air Force for 15 years, and I'm sure. Another 18, one of the organizations I worked with was the Blind Center, which is here in Augusta, probably in Norwood Hospital, Riceville Road. There's only 13 of them in the United States. So you, if you're a blind veteran, you get a chance to go to anyone you want. There are some stipulations. I asked for my wife to go. They say, why? My eyes and my ears, you don't need them. You're going to have people 24-7. I decide when I want my wife to go, okay? <laughs> and so they say, okay, you can go, but uh, we're not gonna pay her expense. I don't need you to So anyway, that's how that goes. <clears throat> Another program they got, the White Cane, every year, October 15th, what we do is all out with publicity to let everybody know that the Lion Veterans Center is coordination with the VA, Probably know we're at a blind center located in the building there again. BVA. The BVA, we, everybody think we're part of the VA. They're not. The VA has money coming from the government. 
be a 501c3 organization. They don't give us nothing. Got to raise it. Got nonprofit avenues. Like to donate for cars. Every year we have a big state uh, national convention. This year is going to be this month, August the 24th in D.C. Uh, we're trying to get as many people as we can to go. D.C. Dinner is nowhere near what you're going to eat up while they're in a hotel. You can come in here in Georgia and have a and Danny place and probably have a couple dollars to go back home with. Not, not in D.C. But that's where they picked this year to have it. Uh, and it's going to be on the 24th through the 28th. <coughs> DC. This year they fortunate enough to put it off in Capitol Hill. So we expect to have a big crowd and had one in person in two years of the pandemic. So we got that going on. We also got the state conventions we have here. There's a chapter here in Augusta. This is team. We got a chapter in Macon, Georgia. Just brought online. We got one in Atlanta. We got one in Dublin. That we just reorganized, they can combine them, they can have more members, be able to reach out to more communities and let them know what we do. We'd be surprised by how many people, even in this community, don't know about the BBA. Is that part of it? No, part of it. Okay. Yeah, our sole purpose is to advocate. We went into the Charlie Norwood Medical Center to have our monthly meetings. Everybody was telling us that can't meet in here, Mr. Every do you have we'll, we'll, we'll start something that gets totally out of control. Why? Because everybody else in the service organization want to meet here. To my knowledge, nobody else has asked that question, can we meet here? Right now, we're the only one that meet in that building. In fact, that meeting was today. Director said, it's my hospital. I'm in charge of running it. I'm going to give you permission. If I have that problem, Mr. Every. That's where we meet at right now, okay? Because we were scrambling around from the library to the fire station to wherever we can get the meeting. So he, he resolved that issue for us. In kind, uh, you know, we went to him back, back to so we could we appreciate the favor. That's him that we need an updated blind center. I opened this blind center here in 1994. Been here that long. Usually when it's full up and running, Got about 18 patients come through every six weeks. How to cook, how to use their cane. Uh, they can't teach them how to drive yet. Uh, but they've been working on it. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things they do do is blind veterans, most of them are entitled to a vehicle. My first question is, you're going to give me a vehicle and I can't see? Well, what they do is they give you our allowance able to get someone to shuffle you around to all the places. Because today I got Barbara with me. Without her, I wouldn't be here. Been my eyes and ears and all day long. She's been trying to keep me in line. Okay? So that's a part of the VA, uh, my benefits. Okay? So I, I thank Barbara because, you know, I don't know if I can put her with me all day long. <laughs> okay? So we, uh, we, do, we, do, we do that. Do the, they got the pro programs so that right now. They, they got just about every gadget you need world of technology, talking watch, talking earphones, uh, um, you name it. My veterans are entitled to get that at no cost. As long as you qualify and meet the requirements, being a blind veteran, that all that stuff come with you. you go back home, you got a, you got a car load of stuff. You don't stop there. When you get back home, VA is tied with, it, with the BVA. It's, they committed to keeping it up and running. Come out to my house, show me how to train it. Uh, it blew up last week. They're in the process of getting it. Uh, and it ain't just for me. Every blind bitch that we got in this area. Okay? Most of the black cities that we go to, they got a disability board set up. Uh, they had one in Richmond County, I know for a fact. What they do is that they invite the Blind Veterans Association to come down sit on that board and give their input on what the county or city could do to help improve it so people can have that disability. Uh, you know, it's, sometimes I hear things that, you know, I wasn't used to dealing with. So I can't read the mail until somebody gives me a form. Uh, you, 
hungry, you can't go to the store, uh, all those things. <clears throat> got eyes on you more. That's, that's a part of helping blind veterans deal with their ability. There's plenty of resources. Got the guys coming from the help blind veterans who are depressed, deal with uh, anxiety. They try to horse ride, teach them how to do a multitude of things. Lessons is all free. You got a whole <coughs> world of things. Got the time. Got a new dorm just been renovated. Pandemic is always going to hold up to 20 people, men and women, with their service dog, come up and how to use it. Our skill, get a, get a sign of a dog, and he goes to California, you go with him. Not a, not a penny you spend. One of the things that now they got about it, service dog goes to the hospital. Whatever it takes to keep you efforts. There's a lot of more committed than others. Glad to say that Charlie Norwood here does outstanding. I've been in 170. Nobody's more committed. I because I was a customer service. I'm gonna go blind. I do that. Do it in the right spot. I was quick. I'm just here to make everybody aware. They have that program. They have the blind uh, our, our white cane event. Happy to take that out there. Everybody can know. That in mind, I down and I thank you again for letting me come. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, thank you, sir. I don't know if y'all know. I guess it was 15 when you ran for commissioner for District 3, wasn't it, Floyd? 14. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Cassidy, could you get with him and just get the information of the white cane event he mentioned? You have it? Okay, very good. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you for the update. Thank, Thank you, everybody. <coughs> Commissioners, you have the consent agenda in front of you. This agenda has been through necessary committee and receive the uh, necessary votes to be placed on this consent agenda. So if we still agree with these items, then we'll accept uh, one motion to approve them all. Motion to approve as presented. Second. Any questions? All in favor, raise your right hand. <coughs> Carries. On to new business. <coughs> Commissioner Malier, I believe you're up. Sir, um, I make a motion to approve resolution number 22-24 as presented and authorize uh, you, Mr. Chairman, to sign all required forms and documents. Second. Johnson, you want to give us an update? This is the uh, annual millage rate vote. Yes, sir. Uh, th and this is a uh, certainly a, a, a big time for Columbia County. We've got some, some very good information as it relates to our millage rate. It comes from a lot of years of of working uh, towards getting here and, and, and good governance and those sort of things. So I am proud to announce that the, the millage rate that you have before you tonight uh, is a reduction. I know that some of our taxpayers have seen notices of increases in the paper uh, that's required by law. It's required by law that you, you advertise a notice of increase even if you leave the millage rate the same. The only time you don't have to do that is if you roll it back to what's referred to as the rollback rate. The rollback rate is a rate that we calculate that essentially says that we're getting uh, near the same amount of taxes that we got last year. So um, the rollback rate is state function or a state that is, calculation. That's correct. It's not our that is correct. It's a, it's a, it's a state calculation. Well, it's calculations based on our digest and based on our budget, but the state tells right, us how to go about that. That is correct. Right. Um, but Columbia County did not have to advertise a tax increase because we're not leaving it the same, and we're not going up. We are rolling the millage rate back uh, in the M&O. And, um, and overall, millage rate is actually being rolled back. Uh, I will say that this is the sixth time in the last seven years that you've rolled the millage rate back in Columbia County. So then there's uh, you know, a lot of conversation about, uh, you know, as, as taxes, uh, as property values go up, you know, what is my board of commissioners doing about that? Um, and I can say responsibly that you have been 
rolling the millage rate back uh, every year. Uh, in 2020, we left it the exact same. We didn't roll it back, but every other year, we've actually rolled it back, uh, and, and that offsets some of those taxes. Uh, people sometimes see higher tax bills. I think it's important to note this because if the, if the Board of Education, for example, leaves their millage rate the exact same, that's 75% of your taxes-ish, 70 to 75%. So a lot of people's uh, taxes actually went up even by us rolling ours back and them leaving theirs the same. Well, this year the Board of Education rolled their millage rate back as well. Uh, they go all the way back. They did like halfway. They did not. That's right. They did not roll it all the way the rollback rate, but they did roll it back three quarters of a mil, which is a significant rollback uh, when you look at the impact that I think it's going to have on people's tax bills. Uh, and then the county uh, is rolling our millage rate back to 5.147. Uh, what's significant about that 5.147 is that is the lowest millage rate that we've had since 1989. So we're at a 33-year low for a millage rate in Columbia County, which is just really unheard of, um, that we could roll it back that far. Um, if you look at the overall millage rate of 8.618, and let me tell you what makes that up. So the, the uh, M&O, maintenance and operation, which is government operations to include all of our judicial services, government services and everything. And to the chairman's point, the rule of law, our courts, sheriff. our sheriff, Gale. Those sort of things, that makes up more than half of our millage rate. So that's half of where our money goes to. So the government operates off of the other half of that. Um, as far as general government is concerned, that's code enforcement, roads and bridges, I mean, all the other things that we do that are not enterprise funds. Uh, but at any rate, uh, our overall millage rate is going to be 8.618. Um, that's made up of the 5.147, this operating, which is the M&O, 6.83, which is debt service. And if you remember in 2017, the voters actually voted for a one mil tax increase to, uh, to fund certain projects in the county, the PAC uh, being one. There were several other projects that they voted on. Uh, that one mil millage rate could actually stay the same throughout the debt service, but we can't advance refund or advance pay that debt service. We have to pay it as we go. Um, so instead of leaving it one mil, uh, if the digest grows, we roll that rate back. So now we're at 0.683 uh, for that millage rate for the debt service. That's all we needed to pay our debt this year. And as the digest continues to grow, we'll be able to roll that back even more. So the taxpayers aren't on the hook for one mil anymore. They're down to 0.683 for that, for all the improvements that we made. And then the fire millage rate is a special service district that we have in Columbia County that provides money specifically for the fire department. It can't be spent on anything else. Um, it is levied in the unincorporated part of the county. The two cities do not levy this tax. Uh, they have their own fire departments. But uh, as you know, our fire department is an ISO 1, which is the absolute best rating that you can get. Um, but when we started levying a tax for the fire department, and that was back in 2004, uh, we never levied enough to be able to fully fund the fire department. So we were having to supplement that with other funds, whether it's general fund money, which means really essentially the millage rate would have to go up or stay the same, or insurance premium tax fund money uh, that we had coming in. We were allowed to use that money as well, but we can also use that on roads and maintenance and other things. So essentially we tied up the majority of the insurance premium tax fund money to make up the difference between the fire millage and uh, what we needed to operate our ISO 1 fire department. So I'm very glad to say tonight, I've been working on this for, for many, many years, probably for the last 10 years, um, we are finally able to set a millage rate for the fire department at 2.788 that fully funds the fire department. So we won't have to be relying on that IPTF fund anymore. We'll be able to use that for maintenance and roads and some other things that we need to use that money for. Um, all of that being said, uh, again, the m and millage rate is at a 33-year low, and your overall millage rate of 8.618 that includes fully funding the fire department uh, goes all the way back to our 2004 rate when we first started levying a tax for that fire department. Uh, so we're extremely proud of that. Um, I do think taxpayers, although people got their assessments already and there were a lot of people that were complaining about a tax increase, that was a little premature because the tax in, there's no increase or decrease until this board and the Board of Education sets the millage rate. The value has gone up on the property. Um, and again, historically, people have paid higher taxes because the school board may have left theirs the same. This year, I actually think people are gonna actually see a reduction in their taxes or maybe stay very close to where it was, although some people are seeing 
twenty to fifty thousand dollar increases in their values. Um, do you want to address the values real quick? I think it's important for people to understand it and, and know this. This board of commissioners has nothing to do with raising values on a home. Um, the way that's done is it's done by an independent board. Uh, that that board, the board of assessors and the uh, tax assessor's office is responsible for that. They're required by law to look at the comps and to look at the sales in a neighborhood to be able to set the values on a piece of property. So if people's values are going up uh, exponentially. They're going. It's, it's because the sales in your neighborhood are are that much more than they used to be. Um, Y'all remember. Uh, a, I guess two years ago now, Columbia County was named the number one place to live in America. And there are people now that are getting in bidding wars on houses and paying above asking price because they want to live in Columbia County. Um, that is raising the values of the houses. So uh, again, I'll, I'll give my analogy. I think I would rather live in a community where my values were going up and my elected officials were lowering my taxes as opposed to a place where my my values were constantly going down and you were having to artificially raise taxes or raise the millage rate to be able to balance it out to be able to provide services. So we're in a really, really good place. Um, I can't stress again how much uh, this, this pleases us to be able to roll this millage rate back this far and to essentially have some of the lowest taxes in the state of Georgia uh, as it relates to our millage rate and to be able to provide the premier level of service that we provide is really unheard of. We're the envy of a lot of folks in Georgia. I'll answer any questions about it. If you have any questions about the Miller's rate. One's not necessarily a question, but when I looked at the uh, the amount of the millage rate that was applied to, called the rule of law, the judicial and the sheriff, uh, as well as the fire, it looks like 60 plus percent of the taxes paid. If you use the fire, yes, law or first responders. That's service. correct. 60, a little over 60 percent if you include both. I do that uh, I made it known and I appreciate the commission because my intent and I know a lot of the discussions we've had we want a legacy of continuing to lower the millage rate every opportunity we get to do the best we can to, to offset the increase in values and the compliments to the staff as well as the as well as the um, other constitutional elected officers because they set their budgets to a certain degree and I've, I've been in meetings each year with them God, and that meeting always goes well. Uh, and the, the philosophy of the county as it relates to spending and are always conscious that we want to control that as much as possible. But moving the M and O rate to a 33 year low, and I guess that math I went to Augusta College, the overall rate is 18 years. Uh, yes, sir. Back to 2004. That's correct. Overall rate goes back to the 2003 2004. So, yep. So I hope uh, my hope is the legacy of this commission will be that we continue to raise taxes. And, and just just to add, I just I, I don't I don't want it to be lost on this. It, you are lowering taxes, and we are able to do this, but we're still providing a level of service that is far superior. Of I, I'm going to say any government in Georgia or any government anywhere, uh, but the level of service that your staff is providing our citizens is second to none, and we've not compromised that in any way. Uh, but still able to lower the millage rate and be able to operate on what we have. Another interesting aspect over my, this is my eighth year on the commission is retail sales have risen. Now, eight years ago, the goal was could we get retail sales revenues up equal to pro uh, property tax? Because that, to me, it's a fair tax. It's a, everybody pays the retail tax, and so we, we are there for the first time. Am I am I correct? Yeah, we are. We are, and so we won't get real deep into this. I think we have to be careful because. Those fluctuate, and the, the last thing we ever want to do is to bring a tax increase before this board. I know I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do everything I can to avoid that. I won't um, put it on the agenda. Exactly, that? exactly. Um, but we, we, we are very close now to, yeah, having having our um, our sales tax cover um, not not quite 50% of our right of our budget, which is which is huge. Yeah. Um, again, if, if it was even 40%, there'd be a lot of people that would be very, very happy with that. A lot of governments are in that 20, 30% range. Any other comments or questions? All in favor of lowering the millage rate, please raise your right hand. Okay. <coughs> this next item, we have two folks that want to speak, Stephen Claiborne and Sean Claiborne. Y'all here? Come on down. 
Y'all, if you're going to say the same thing, feel free to come together. <laughs> you'll just state your name and address for the record, sir. My name's Steve Claiborne, and I'm at 5513 Old Augusta Highway, which is across the main road from this property that we're talking about. Uh, the Planning Commission, we met with them, and they are recommending that you disapprove uh, changing the zoning requirement here. And we're coming forth to provide you some additional information to support that decision to disapprove it. Uh, I've got three items that I want to bring up. The first is the county already has a zoning requirement for a concrete batch plant, and that's an M1. And I'm not sure why they're trying to pigeonhole it into the S1 category. So you should disapprove it automatically because it is not correctly being zoned properly for a concrete batch plant. <coughs> Second is if you put a concrete batch plant in here, that is going to dramatically impact the water table. All of the, the homes that are out here are on well water. When we moved out there about 50 years ago uh, in the 70s, the well water table, our well was 60 feet. We've had over the years to continually add additional pipe. We're down to almost 200 feet now because of the influx of new homes being built in that area. And we don't have a problem with that. The problem is, is if you put any kind of industrial plant or anything that starts drawing a lot of water off of that water table, as soon as we have any kind of a dry season that comes through here, that water is going to dry up. We've had it in the past. We know that it's going to happen. So we strongly urge that you look at this and disapprove it because of the water. The last item is this land is adjacent to Gordon Highway. It's about two miles from one and a half to two miles from the new gate six. Especially in the morning and in the evening, there is a constant stream of traffic down through there. Now you're going to have these concrete trucks that are going to be trying to get out and get in across this two-lane highway. Plus also you're going to have cement trucks which are probably two and a half to three times as large as your concrete trucks bringing cement into this plant. All of that traffic is going to just tie everything up and it's going to be a very dangerous situation. We've already had several people killed right near this intersection where the Lone Oak Lane comes out over the past few years, uh, say 10 years. So when you start adding anything that's heavy duty moving into that two lane highway, you're gonna have major problem areas, especially because you have school buses that stop along this way. Do you have any questions for me? Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. <coughs> so I'm Sean Claiborne. I'm at 128 Sherrill Ann Drive, Augusta, or Grovetown, Georgia. I am literally right behind this plant. <coughs> A, uh, if you watch the meeting notes from earlier with the Planning Commission, you'll see we have a bunch of people here. This is a nightmare for our community. Okay? The does not bring anything. It's just a bunch of negatives for our community. The concrete and cement industry, that's the third largest pollutant in the world, according to the EPA. Not just that, but the noise alone, most of this equipment, the concrete trucks, the generator that they're planning on running, all of this is more than 80 decimals and on a higher. Now you're talking about running this from three days a week plus Saturdays from 6 a.m. to 11 o'clock at night. Um, 
because this morning I heard the trucks backing up out of there while I'm trying to get ready for work in the morning. No big deal. I'm getting up at that times, but Saturdays I like to sleep. I don't really want trucks coming in at 6 o'clock and getting uh, air horns and all that. But my wife, who works at the hospital with me, she works nights. She's trying to sleep during the day. Talking all the different pollutants from the cement and everything, want to kill bee farms that we have. Causes just, you know, walk out, wipe off your car, you know, time to go wash it again. An hour later, oh, it's already covered in silica and everything again. This plant is a five-year lease. Only thing it's doing is dumping stuff on this ground, and then they up and move. It does not bring anything benefit to our community. It doesn't bring jobs. It's going to lower our property values that you're talking about for the assessment rates. It's going to increase health, which we have a lot of older and children around with asthma. It's one of the reasons Evan Gray actually moved his tree cutting plant was all of that uh, dust and everything was causing problems in the community. It just brings nothing but a bunch of negatives. So I ask that y'all do uh, follow the planning zones, project this. Thank you. Matt, you want to give us a quick rundown on the situation? Yes, yeah, so this is a request to go from RA to S1. Uh, one of the concerns brought up is why are we doing S1 when there's already a, a, a place for it to fit in our code. M1 is where this would fit as a limited use. Uh, when the applicant came in, they did say this was temporary. Um, instead of going and asking the commission for a <coughs> M1 use, Go with S1 and, and limit it to just that use versus giving every M1 use out there. It was just a different way of looking at it. Um, but it is for a temporary use for a concrete batch plant. Um, we have been told by the regional commission, CSRA regional commission, that they have determined this is a development of regional impact. Therefore, they have a right to review it and provide input into this process. We have not received that as of yet. Uh, we are expecting to receive that very soon. So. Um, Leave it this time. We'd actually like to postpone this till the 16th, so you can also consider. How will that affect, regardless of what they say, when that comes up, or whatever, when that comes back, regardless of what they say, does that impact our ability to make a decision? It does not impact your ability to make a decision. It's just more information for you to consider when you make your decision. We don't know how they're going to. They can come back and say they're against it. They can come back and say they're totally for it. We don't know what they're going to say. But if they come back and say they're totally for it. It still doesn't impact anything. Irrelevant, okay. It's irrelevant. You still have the final say, so. Any questions? So their request is for us to <coughs> wait till their information gets here for that is, us to that make is, that decision. That is correct. Is that correct? That is correct. I Leave think point procedurally, that's what uh, we're asking, procedurally to make that, to, to wait until we until get that DRI back. Next meeting. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Again, I don't think it affects your vote one way or the other, but I just think, you know, there's certain certain things that we have to do in government, and then this DRI is one of them that the state requires. And I think for us to act prematurely, regardless of which way you would vote, would, would be premature. I think we need to let it go through the process. Um, and, and then you, you will have additional information. And again, you can take that into consideration or not. Um, it, 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 this is, we're only putting it off for procedural purposes. Questions? Mr. Chair, uh, I make a motion to uh, file RZ220705 to postpone the request for a rezoning from RA to S1, property located at tax map 054, parcel 010, August 16, 2022 meeting. Second. To reiterate, whatever comes back, irrelevant on how we vote on the 16th, right? Uh, I, I would say irrelevant. It's, it's, it's relevant, but it's not. It's, it's not binding. It's not binding in any way. The state can't tell you that you have to approve it or not approve it. Uh, so, I, again, this, this board's free to take whatever action it needs, but I think it's prudent to have all the information. I, I'm pretty sure that our staff and our planning commission did a good job at what they did on this. Yes, sir. I, I don't know what you know, back, but I'm not a fan of waiting for that. Get it. Motion second on the floor. Anybody have any other? 
questions? All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries. <coughs> Next item. Julia. Matt, you want to? Yes, I didn't know if you want to talk about it first. So this, we did receive a request to um, withdraw without prejudice this next action, but it was a request to go from R2 to CC. This was to allow the construction of a restaurant and two retail facilities located off of uh, Furious Ferry Road. This is just of uh, Evans Locks Road. Um, but again, uh, the applicant has requested that this be pulled without prejudice from the agenda. Any questions? Because we generally allow that. Chair, uh, file RZ-220706. I make a motion to uh, approve the request to withdraw RZ-220706 without prejudice. Second. Any other questions? And what this does is this starts, just so everybody will know if anybody has a question, it will start the process all over. That's and right. pick it up where we're at. It's a new process. A whole new application, a whole new public hearing. It's, it's basically just start over. Motion and second on the floor. All in favor, raise your right hand. Carries. The next item, we're asked to reconsider a vote. Is Ms. Lee and Ursher here? I believe we have one that more, Mr. Chair. Oh, I've already. I want to go again. One. Jumping ahead. Commissioner Richardson. Yes, sir. I'll make a motion to approve the contract with Canco Lighting for street light procedure update services in the amount of $40,000. Second. Uh, this is a uh, this is approval to bring in a consultant to help us go through our streetlight policy. This is a task-driven uh, proposal here. You'll see five tasks in front of you. If we were to do all of them, it would amount to $40,000. Uh, I do not foresee us using all five tasks, but they are there in the event they are needed or we are directed to use them. Um, if you have specific questions about the proposal, I'm going to ask Mr. Titus to answer those questions. He has spent a lot of time working on this process uh, with staff as well as with the proposal and um, with Commissioner Richardson, or Vice Chair Richardson. So, any other questions he can answer for you? I don't have any. Um, like Deputy Manager uh, Plopper said, this came up about a year ago. We rejected this. I'm trying to work through it uh, at staff level and with some help from Georgia Power. We don't think we got any direction from, from Georgia Power. And we're, our staff are certainly not lighting experts for sure, but they did put a lot of, lot of time in it. Titus, traffic, cricket, uh, Sterling, Mr. Butler. And so there's, there has been a lot of time put into this. For us to get to a resolution from experts, I think we're probably going to have to have some experts to get. I think there's been a lot of questions. Streetlight district for several years now. I think we need to look at it. And not a big consultant guy. But I think this will help us get to where we can make a decision where our streetlights, how we want our streetlight district, corridor lighting and, and neighborhoods and certain zoning districts and whatever. I think it'll help us get to the end of the process. People to give us something that we could bring back so it would be effective this year. We don't approve any street lights time anyway. So hopefully we'll have that information back so we can be back in the street light approving this time frame. So did I, did I miss anything that you, you want to add anything, Kyle? Well, I, I think you know, um, <clears throat> the current policy adopted in that served us well. There has been over the questions that have come up, some gaps that we see. Commercial lighting for core. Developer contribution. Favorite contribution. Front cost is important right now. So bring somebody on that is expert in street lighting, which not.
solid resolution to hopefully carry. I think I was the one who put it on debate only because I, I break out in hives every time we talk about hiring consultants. I always want to thoroughly talk it through. We, 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 we've worked on this for a year. We've, we've met with George Power. We've met <coughs> calls with Cobb County, with Forsyth, with Kennesaw policies. Policies are more robust. However, through those conversations, questions, answers, up several drafts of policies. I'd like to continue. Final mark. Consultant Dave Kennedy. Any other questions or comments? Motion second on the floor. All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries. Well, we've had a request to reconsider a vote we took last meeting. She asked, she's asking us to reconsider, and she was going to talk us through it. My name is Leanne Ushery, and my address is 956 Kestrel Drive, Evans, Georgia. Is it okay if I just read my statement that I wrote? Absolutely. On July 7th, my application for a conditional use license was denied, and I would like to please ask for a reconsideration. I regret not giving my presentation at the last meeting because I feel that I was misunderstood. What I am asking for is a conditional use license to perform single needle and cosmetic PMU body art micropigmentation at the Vogue Hair and Beauty Salon on Washington Road. This conditional use will be used by me and only me performing these services in a single private room inside of the salon. I am the only person in the salon that will be offering these services and who will be licensed to do so. This will not be a tattoo parlor, but a private space inside of the salon that will operate only during salon business hours and the private room will be used by no one but me. Single needle micropigmentation or tattooing also includes areola restoration for mastectomy patients, eyebrow hair strokes and microblading, and anything else that is small scale and cosmetic related below the neck. I feel like my services do not fit in in a tattoo parlor and that is not what I am asking for in my circumstance. With this license, I will be able to provide these services to women in a private setting that they are most comfortable in. State law allows cosmetic micropigmentation using single needle instruments and equipment in salons and similar establishments as long as it is, it is in a separate private area. This is a service that is for women, by women, and I am qualified, trained, and licensed for this job that I have fallen in love with, and I need this license to do that in my own private room inside of Vogue. I love working in Columbia County, and I hope that your reconsideration will grant this conditional use and allow me to continue my, sp my small independent business here. Questions? Mr. Reconsider. I have a question for Mr. Sterling, if you don't mind. Can we limit of license tattoos? Just tweet just there or she. Could they put ten in that or That's what it says actually. Eight. Eight nine. Eight and nine. Make sure you had you asked the question, can we limit the number of licenses? Uh, we don't have suite. anything to do with licenses. <laughs> no. You can limit to the two suites, yes. Suite number, but not the number of licenses. Yes, sir. That was my question. Thank you. Shall we reconsider? Actually, I have, a, I have a comment. I don't believe at this point there's any new information in this matter that we didn't have in front of us when we voted um, at the previous meeting. Um, please keep in mind that this applicant is now asking for this because um, she was basically caught operating outside of our standards, and that's why it's brought to us now. And it could be considered that um, if we reconsider this, it, it could be viewed that we are rewarding that behavior. Please. 
make a motion to reconsider the action taken at the July 19, 2022 commission meeting on uh, RZ-220604 request for conditional use for a tattoo parlor, tax map 079, parcel 098. Second. Condition. So this, is so you you have a motion to reconsider it. If you if yeah, you reconsider it, there'll oh, okay. be another motion. Okay. Okay. If you choose to, okay. so procedurally, you would have to approve the motion to reconsider. Correct. Okay. There's a motion to reconsider. Second on the floor. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed. Motion carried. Reconsidering. Right. Uh, I make a motion to approve the request for a conditional use for a single needle tattoo on the property located at tax map 079, parcel 098D, with the following condition. The approval of a single needle tattoo is for suites 8 and 9 only. Mr. Chair, I would like to make a small comment. I normally don't do this. Uh, I feel like this commission and the commissioners try extremely hard. Uh, to please our constituents. Sometimes people disagree, uh, even though I feel like we're doing the best job we can. We all care about our county. Uh, this time, I did get an email that kind of disturbed me. I just want to make the comment, uh, rather than email, I think a courtesy, talk to the commissioner yourself would be best. Uh, one of the comments was that because of the job we're doing, people 18 to 50 are leaving the county. That is incorrect. That is 61% of our population. There were other negative comments made that I won't discuss, but that is not the way to handle county business. That's not the way to get ahead, get your point across to the community. And that's, that's just stating what I feel and the reason is that I feel like we do an excellent job Tried to please our constituents. It is a challenge, and it generally is. speaking, I won't say every vote. Uh, most votes make somebody happy and somebody it, mad. It, it does. It does. We got to think of that before we run for office. Yeah. Uh, too late. Too late. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a, a motion, a second on the floor. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed. Passes three to two. Okay. <laughs> legal matters. No legal matters. matters. Tonight. That's right. Request for review by committee. None of those. Any public comments or participation? Uh, executive session. We have four items I believe we can deal with right here and now. We're in the executive session. I believe Commissioner Richardson, you have these. Yes, sir. I'll make a motion to approve $1,300 to Joe uh, Culver House tax amount <coughs> 065014G, $14,000 to Wendy tax amount 065014L, $3,500 to Hope Brantley tax amount 065030, $3,400 to William and Rita Tannehill. Tax map 065035, $8,100 to Michael and Peggy. Tax map 065015 c $10,400 to Bruce Ward. Tax map 065015D, $21,300, $21,300 to Spirit Master Funding and LL. Tax map 710031 to a right of way and or easement road widening project. Second, but I have a question. On parcel 28, the Culver House property, uh, our original offer was 24000 but they countered back at $1,300. How did it go down? How, that's quite a swing. Is that an error? I believe that 24,000 is not correct. It's 0.039 acres of permanent easement. On the side over here, your, your total offer is the $1,300. The 24,000 is not. 
Well, we didn't originally offer them 24 and they said, no, only give me 1300 bucks. That's not. Yeah. I wish people would do that, but that's not how it works. So. <laughs> yeah, the offer is the important part. That is correct with the motion. Right. Mm -hmm. Motion and second on the floor. All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries. Motion to accept the donation. 41 parcel zero. From James. Second. There's not a pond or anything on this getting donated to us, is there? Okay. The little small remnant that was no use to anyone else that joined a piece of property already owned, so make it part of our green space. Don't want any ponds. Motion and second on the floor. All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carry. Twelve thousand dollars <coughs> junction five six to permanent fire station. Second. Question. Ever raise your right hand. Motion carries. Accept the donation from Lauren and Marcus Uber. Wingate sewer project. Second. <coughs> All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries. According to my paperwork, only one more motion that needs to be made. Chairman, I motion that we adjourn. Please. Second. All in favor, raise your right hand. We're adjourned. <coughs>